Hello, my dear church boys, and welcome back to yet another episode of St. Robert's Day Game Podcast. And in this podcast episode, we're going to be talking about texting, or more specifically, how texting has changed over the years. Because things have changed in the culture, people have changed how they text in general with emojis and reaction to messages and, and people texting with someone all the time. And all of these things have influenced how you should be texting with your day game leads. So let's see what has changed. We're going to be covering texting after 7 p.m., which used to be one of the most basic important rules uh, not to text after 7 p.m. We are going to be talking about how do you have to date request sooner now when people are always texting with someone so that the fire kind of doesn't burn out. We're going to revisit how often you should text girls. Do you because a lot of guys believe you should only text once a day and that is not true. Uh, We are going to be talking about what to do when girls don't respond to your messages because again that has changed a lot as well and it's more and also what's important what to do when instead of answering your message she reacts with an emoji or something like that on WhatsApp. We're going to be revisiting the 48 hour roll off which I think also isn't relevant in all situations anymore and of course we're going to be talking about what to do if they answer really really slow should you still be responding slower than they are i don't think we should do that in all cases so i'm going to give you a solution for that and the last thing we're going to be discussing texting with tourists who don't have access to data or or wi-fi and don't have mobile data so when they didn't respond for five hours and now when they do it's clear they are on wi-fi should you be texting a lot with them at that moment. If you are new to my podcast, then I'm St. Robert and for the last more than four years I've been teaching about day game and dating you guys from literally all over the world, from USA to Australia, Hong Kong, all over Europe, Canada, Latin America, etc. And we have a great community with amazing group chat with more than 400 day gamers from all over the world. And the best thing about this group chat, there is no mental masturbation, no blah, blah, blah. It's only technical day game conversations. No one's bitching about how day game is hard or anything else. Everyone is discussing day game. Everyone is going out and it's incredible. If you're not part of our community yet, you can join the group chat for free by going and clicking on the link in the description, filling the form there to join the mailing list and you will get the invitation link in the welcome email. Also, if you're someone who is already going out and getting numbers and maybe even getting dates and you need help with texting and to learn what to do on dates to overcome all the typical problems that you guys have, escalating too fast, escalating too slow, how to invite her over, how to escalate at your place, etc., then I have a free texting and dating guide on daygamecourses.com. These guides used to be available in two versions, basic and advanced, with basic being available to any everyone and advanced. Well, you had to do a few more things to get access to that. Now they're completely for free and available for everyone on daygamecourses.com. And now before we jump into the topic, let me just tell you a few updates where I am, what's the plan, where I'm going for coaching, etc. I'm still in Buenos Aires, Argentina, but in a few days I'm heading down to Patagonia. I'm going to be traveling around Patagonia, going to Mendoza afterwards, visiting Chile and Peru. But then when the March approaches, I am going to Mexico. Why? Because in March it's time for spring break with a bunch of college girls from USA going down to Mexico to party. And I think that's an incredible place and time for day game for two reasons. Number one, well, it's full with American girls. And if you actually want to learn day gaming with girls that you're going to see every day, if you are from the States or US, because, you know, many people say that day game in Europe and, and States is very different, but I don't really agree to that having coached quite a bit in both of those places. So you are day gaming girls that you would normally see on your everyday, everyday day game session. But the second reason is those girls are there to have fun. If in some places in the US or in Europe you will see that girls have a rather cold attitude, well, this is your opportunity to day game the same girls in an environment where they're 
having fun instead of running to their work, university or whatever else. After Mexico, I'll be getting ready to get back to Europe. Probably early May, I'm heading back there. And in May, I am going to a very good day game city in Europe. Sort of one of the Europe's hidden gems, you could say. It's an amazing day game city with nice local girls, but with a bunch of foreign students. And I'm going there to coach a student, but I will have one more coaching spot there and I might make a stop in the USA for a few days between Mexico and Europe. So if you want to learn day game with me in Mexico, somewhere in the US or in that hidden gem city in Europe, then click on a link description which says day game coaching. Read more about how coaching with me usually works. Fill the form at the bottom of the page and I'll send you more details, whether that's dates, prices, cities, and everything else. And then if everything sounds good, we're gonna jump on a short WhatsApp call just so you can ask any additional questions you have to understand whether this is the best idea for you. And now with all of this being said, let's start talking about texting. First, let's talk about texting after 7 p.m. Where, where does this rule originally come from? The idea was that if you are a dude with interesting life who has friends and, and social circle and, and girls and whatnot, then you're probably busy after 7 p.m. So by not texting after 7 p.m., you were kind of showing that you have a life, have dates and interesting shit is happening. Uh, I'm fine with this rule partially. The thing I don't like about this, it excludes it, it, like two things. Number one is it's sort of fake because maybe you don't have that life yet even though you want it and then you're faking it until you're making it, which is a good idea, but I have a love-hate relationship with kind of things in day game that are fake. And the other reason why I'm not a big fan of, of this is, well, what if you're an introvert who actually prefers spending his evenings inside geeking out on his hobbies as, as a bunch of people are, then it kind of says that you're, you're not as good as someone who's going out and doing shit. If these two reasons mean anything at all to you, then it's kind of your decision how to approach this. But if you're talking purely from the perspective of what gives better results, what gives the right image, purely technical, I still suggest texting at least, at least much, much less after 7 p.m. Well, but then here comes the question. What if she doesn't respond at all during the day and only is texting in the evening, which could be the case if she is actually working during the day in a job where she either isn't allowed to use her phone or if she is professional enough to not use her phone for private stuff during the day. In those cases, yes, she will be texting with you only in the evening. So does that mean you shouldn't text with her? Obviously not. If you see that she regularly only responds in the evening, that that kind of explains that, yes, she probably has a work, she's doing stuff during the day and anything else she leaves for the evening, most likely she cannot respond to you during the day. And in these cases, and by the way, this is something you see more in Latin America. I don't see a lot of this in uh, Europe. Um, I would say in these cases, text with them in the evening. They are quite likely just at home, tired from work. They're maybe not going out if they're responding well over the text and they're spending their evening at home. They would probably be happy to chat with you a little bit. So this is a one very big exception where I think it's totally fine to text in the evening, but then again, Remember, don't become her texting buddy. You shouldn't be texting too much when she is starting to answer your texts. And if you're chatting with her in the evening and you see that she's answering your text, she's asking you questions, it means she is engaged enough for you to date request. You should be sending out a date request. And then if she says, oh, I'm super busy, I can't, uh, mm -mm, then you don't text with her in the evenings, you roll off a little bit, whether that's 48 hours or less, we're gonna be talking about that a little bit later, but remember, don't become her texting buddy as soon as she's responding well, date request, and if she's not coming out, you should be heading out and getting more leads. In general, I would say out of all the rules, this is the one that you shouldn't sweat too much, but still. I suggest texting at least much, much, much less in the evenings after 7 p.m. And you shouldn't be doing too much texting in general. Next, let's talk about date requesting sooner because 
For whatever reason, guys have an impression that you should be texting with a girl for, I don't know, three, four, five days before you are date requesting her and that is not the case. But specifically, the questions asked in a group chat about this comes uh, for for date request about date requesting on the same day when you get the number, and that is a little bit different. But well, we'll get to that a little bit later. But first of all, nothing has changed in the in terms of date requesting. If she is responding well, if she is responding fast and good to your messages, answering your questions, maybe even asking you a question, date request. Don't become her texting buddy. But be very careful with this when you are texting with someone whose number you got the same day. So it's still in most cases not a good idea to date request on the same day you got the number. Why? And we're going to talk later about exceptions. So first of all, why? Because from what I've seen in my experience, in the experience of my wings and in my students, most of the cases, if you date request on the same day you got the number, you have two scenarios. Scenario one, she comes out with you on the same day, you get a same delay, same day delay. Amazing. Scenario two, she can come out or won't come out because you date requested too soon, thus it appearing a little bit too needy, and then she never comes out with you. I don't know what's the case, what's the reason for that, I don't know why that's happening, but that's kind of the experience I've seen for me and my students and wings, etc. So if you get the number, don't date request on the same day you got the number, but there are exceptions. Most of the day gamers who are watching day game videos and then going out on day gaming are doing so in Europe and in the USA, and, and that's where this rule comes from. But if you are day gaming, let's say you go on a day game trip to Latin America or, or Ukraine was the same for me. Uh, if you go on a day game trip to Latin America and they are very, very responsive, responding fast, you should date request as soon as possible, most likely the same day you had you got her number. But of course, always date request with two options, offer her two options for coming out and then see how she responds. For whatever reason, in some places in Latin America, the leads disappear super fast. They're very responsive on the day when you get the number, but then you ping them the next day and they just disappear. They just evaporate and die. Like there's nothing you can do about it. That's, hard. That's kind of like part of the game there. But yes, in Latin America, especially this applies to Argentina in my eyes, in, in some cases, maybe in Colombia, but not in all cases, you can and oftentimes you should be date requesting super, super fast if she's responding very, very well. I had the same experience in Kharkiv, Ukraine. Uh, if numbers were responding well, it was completely fine to date request them on the same day and see them maybe the same day, maybe the next day. But again, those are exceptions and since most guys are day gaming in, 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 in Europe or in the US, those ex it doesn't apply to those locations. You still shouldn't be date requesting on the same day you got the number. In the free texting guide on datingcourses.com, I do go over some rules when you should be date requesting, but in general, you can simply date request as soon as she res is responding well to your messages asking you questions or if the texting hasn't improved over let's say three days just go for the date because because whatever you do over text if she isn't engaged over two days or, or three days if she's not actively texting you're not going to save this lead over text so the best you can do is simply date request and see whether she's interested or not if she's interested she's gonna gonna come out with you if she's not you're not gonna change her mind over text by the way, one more thing about fast texting and date requesting. New York City is very different when it comes to texting. In New York City, the dates are fast and the texting is also very fast. I recently recorded a podcast episode with Keith from New York City who has 30 day game plays in one and a half years in day game. That's his first one and a half years day gaming in New York City. Those results are incredible. After he got those results, I coached him there and, and this guy had very, very, very good day game fundamentals. We were polishing some more advanced things in his day game. You should definitely listen to the interview with him if you are from New York City and or you want to understand stand day game and texting there better. I will link to that interview together with this podcast. 
Next, let's talk about how often you should text because somehow guys have gotten the impression that you should only text once a day and that is not true. You should be texting more because if you just send a ping once a day, you know, there's a lot happening in her life and she's busy and she will probably just forget about someone like just one of the guys she is texting with because again, don't think, don't think that any girl you're texting with, don't think that you're the only guy she is texting with. There's always someone hitting on her if she is hot enough and interesting enough. You can easily text a few times a day. You don't have to just ping once a day. And again, exchange a few messages in the morning. Uh, you ping, she responds. You can respond one more time. Maybe she responds, maybe not, doesn't really matter. You exchange a few messages a bit later in a day. And if she is responding, well, just date request. Again, don't become her type texting buddy. And remember, texting once a day is not enough. Although you shouldn't be sending photo pings a bunch of times throughout the day. I think that is too much. I think one photo ping throughout the day is okay. Maybe two in some cases, but you know, you're kind of pushing the line. So yes, text multiple times a day, but don't send many photo pings. That's a bit too much investment in my eyes. Next, let's talk about girls not responding to your pings, to whatever message you sent. Well, Welcome to reality. Not every text requires an answer and her not answering doesn't mean anything bad. This is one of the kind of rules in the back in the day where, oh, if she doesn't respond to your ping, roll off for 48 hours. Well, listen, if you see something funny on the street and you send a message to your friend, hey, just saw this, ha ha ha, or maybe you send a picture or a video of or whatever. Well, do you expect your friends to always answer about small things like that? Like it's a cool message to send. It's fine. You can use it as a ping, but just as your bodies don't have to respond to all of that shit, girls don't have to respond to that too. Think about when you are texting with your friends, maybe they also send you something interesting, something funny or, or quirky or whatever. Like when you don't always have time to respond to all the small things that people send to you. So there are texts that require response. Maybe it's a ping where it's clear that like there should be some sort of a response or maybe there is a question. Not a girl not responding when you asking ask a question is, is one thing, but if it's just some picture of something you saw or one of those kind of office of the day photos where you're sitting in front of your laptop in a coffee shop, etc. It's kind of okay if she doesn't respond to that. You shouldn't take it as an indicator of disinterest and roll off or anything like that. If you sent a ping that really doesn't require a response, there was no question, it was something something very small, uh, you can send something a bit more engaging the next day, it's like something that really requires a response, maybe something with a question. You can send even something more the same day, I think. But again, that is if you were sending something really, really, really small that doesn't, that definitely doesn't require any response. like. If she doesn't respond, I would maybe very rarely text the same day. I'd probably text the next day with something that does require her response just to gauge her, in, you know, like how interested she is. And by the way, one of the reasons to send texts that don't require answer is to see how much, like how interested is she? Because if she's really interested, you can send whatever the fuck you want and she will respond. So that's actually a good way to understand what's up. Which brings us to the next question, uh, emojis. And I'm not talking about sending an emoji in a text, but I'm sending, uh, I'm talking about the thing where in WhatsApp, you can long press on a message and then just react to the text with some sort of uh, uh, emoji. And some guys, when a girl does that, they view it as a um, girl not responding and they view it as something bad. Well, I don't think, I think it's not the same as not replying, of course, if it's a text where you ask a question then and she just reacts to that, well, that that's, yeah, she, she didn't respond. You should definitely roll off. But if again, if it's some funny ping, or not funny, flirty ping that you send her or like kind of your office of the day or beer with friends or whatever your typical ping is, if you send something like that and she reacts with an emoji, I still view it as a response. It's not a high investment response, but just as you saw, just as we just talked before, uh, not every text requires a response and that type of a text 
could get a response, could not get a response. Both options are fine. And when she reacts to it somehow, I still think that's some sort of an investment. It's not the same as getting a full on response from her, but it's not just not responding at all. So don't think that when she just reacts to your message with an emoji, that it means anything bad. And when, or if we're talking about girls not responding to our text, then let's talk about the 48 hour roll off. I think it, it used to be a good role, uh, a rule when people weren't texting as much and, and weren't as busy, like they're, they're, they didn't have like 50 conversations going on in their WhatsApp. I think now 48 hours is definitely too much, but it kind of uh, depends on a situation. If it's one of those situations where you send a ping uh, which doesn't require an answer, I think it's totally fine to also roll off, but roll off in a way, like definitely not 48 hours, just maybe text her again the next day, that would be 24 hours, or um, when should you still roll off for 48 hours? If you ask a question and she just ignores that question, that doesn't respond to that message at all, I think you should no, you should text her next time in, in two days. Uh, that, that definitely deserves a 48 hour roll off. Or um, maybe if you date request with two options and, and she says something like, oh, da, 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 I can't and she doesn't give you a reason, doesn't offer you another option, then I think um, a roll off of 24 to 48 hours is totally fine. But some guys have a misconception where if a girl doesn't respond to your uh, date request, she says no, and and, and then uh, they would completely ignore when the girl keeps when the girl keeps texting with them, and and I don't think that's a good idea to do. Of course, if she if you date request, she says no, and then keeps texting you all the time as if you were her texting buddy, then you know. Take some time <laughs> to respond to her messages, maybe ignore a few of her messages if she's, if she's responding a lot, but in general you should remember that you're not her texting buddy and the goal is to get her out, but 48 roll, 8 hour roll off doesn't mean that you ignore her texts, which I don't know where that misconception came from, but some guys have that idea and that is definitely wrong. Next question, what if they are responding very, very slow? Well, remember, if she's answering only during the evenings, maybe that is because she's working during the day and she can't text. And of course, in that case, you shouldn't be waiting until the next day to respond because it's logical that she's finally off work and she can text you. So you should be texting when, uh, in the evening in that case, even if she responded slow. But if she responds, like you send her a morning in a uh, message in the morning, she responds after work, then you text her again, and then she only responds you the next morning. Well, obviously she isn't as interested and you should pretty much forget about the lead. And some guys will say, well, if she takes a long time to respond, I am not gonna take a long time because I wanna keep the thread going. I don't wanna lose the lead. Well, the thing is you have already lost the lead. It's not maybe because you did something wrong. It's just that she is not that interested. And then they will say, yeah, I will respond faster. Actually, sometimes it turns into this battle where you are responding slower and then she's responding even slower and then you're responding even slower and then she's responding even slower and it's like you both know what's up and you both know what's happening. Uh, what I suggest doing in cases like that, respond faster once or twice. See if that helps. And whatever happens, just date request and delete the number. Texting faster won't save a lead. If she cares, she will come out. If she doesn't care, nothing will change that. So yes, you can respond faster once or twice. See if that changes her behavior, regardless of whether it changes her behavior or not. Date request and be done with it. She either cares about you or she doesn't. Next, how to make sure the number she gave you is real when number closing. I personally think guys are worried about fake numbers too much. I, over thousands and thousands of approaches, have literally only a few cases where I was pretty sure the number was fake. Most likely, if you can't find the number on WhatsApp, like she just made a mistake. Maybe in some places, in some cultures, it's common to give out fake numbers, but I think a more common reaction would just to be to say she has a boyfriend or just flake when you text her. So 
in my experience and from talking to my wings and what I've seen from my students, girls don't give out fake numbers that often. If she made a mistake with one, one digit or, or, or if she skipped one digit, I, I really think that in most cases that's a mistake. And if this happens a lot to you, then I don't think that uh, worrying about her giving you the fake number is the right thing to do. You should actually be understanding why would she give a fake number to you? Why doesn't she want to text with you? Why doesn't she want to go out with you? So texting her or calling her or whatever is really not the solution. So what I want to talk about here is how do you make sure she didn't make a mistake? She actually wants to talk to you, wants to see you, but she made a mistake when uh, entering the number. A simple thing I suggest my students usually do is to send her a message right there and by saying, hey, I'm going to send you a message just so you have my number and you see who's texting you. That should solve all the problems. Again, sometimes because of country codes, city codes and, and different things, if, if girls aren't used to talking to foreigners, again, this is a thing in Latin America where they're not used to how they don't know how to save a number in a foreigner's phone because there is a country code, there's a city code, and sometimes you need that zero, sometimes you don't, sometimes you need a nine, sometimes you don't. It's not that she doesn't want to give you her number, it's just she just doesn't know how to do that. So a simple way is to simply text, does it, uh, to check, does it show up on WhatsApp? Send her a message. If it doesn't, then you can do the WhatsApp QR code where she opens her WhatsApp and there is a place where... Uh, it's it's usually in the settings or under profile or whatever. Just check it on your WhatsApp so you know where to find it on her phone. There's a QR code you can scan on your phone and that will automatically add her contact to your phone. And that's, but you should only be using that if, uh, if you couldn't find her on WhatsApp after she gave you her number, when you are checking the number again. You're not doing that because she gave you the wrong number intentionally. You're doing this to avoid cases where she wanted to see you, but she just uh, made a mistake or didn't know how to save that number in a foreigner's phone. If she doesn't want to see you, you're not going to save it by like just making sure she didn't give you a fake number. No. So just text her once you get the number and that should solve all of your problems. And the last question I want to discuss is from a guy in our group chat. One day he will be on this podcast because that guy has incredible results. He's around 50 and he has so many day game lays. He has been day gaming for so many years. It's incredible. Okay, uh, his question is, most of my texting is on SMS, which is typical in the USA and Canada, but a sizable chunk of my sets is with French or European girls who use mostly WhatsApp especially girls who stay for just a few months and keep their French slash European number. Typically, they use Wi-Fi so they would reply either fast or right away, irrespective of their level of interest. So my question is, should you adjust your strategy depending on which what platform she's using? I don't apply the one third longer time when girl with girls on WhatsApp. If she responds to a message I send several hours sent several hours earlier with res, uh, earlier, my response to her last message is within minutes because I want to keep the inter interaction alive while she is in I area with Wi-Fi. Makes sense. 100% makes sense, dude. You should keep doing that. That is similar to when girls are working during the day in a job where they can't or won't use their phone and then they can only text you, text with you in the evening. You should be texting in the evenings with them and just the same way is with tourists who don't have mobile data and can only text with you when they have Wi-Fi, maybe they're in a coffee shop or somewhere else. So you should definitely be texting with them when they respond when they are on Wi-Fi. But again, guys, listen, this is specific question about tourists in places where it's harder or very expensive to get a local SIM card. For example, USA, Canada, and both of those places, getting a local SIM card is freaking expensive compared to Europe or Latin America. So a lot of people who are there for a shorter time will not be getting local SIM cards and will have no or very limited data. 
Well, those were all the questions, but uh, guys, you have to understand that uh, most of day gamers, as I said before, are day gaming in places in like Europe, UK, USA, where the texting rules make sense. And, and most of these exceptions and these questions that, that we just discussed are in situations where different rules apply. Maybe it's in Latin America where you should date request sooner. Maybe it's in places where girls usually work a lot during the day and can't text while they are working. And then that is very often the case in Latin America. I don't know for what reason. So these questions were sort of exceptions of the norm. And why I think that's important is because these are general texting rules. Everything I talked about on the daygamecourses.com texting guide, those are general rules. You shouldn't be following them as a blind guy, just, just banging your head against the wall and just not thinking on your own and just doing what the rules say. The idea behind these texting rules, you have to understand reasons behind them. You have to understand why you shouldn't text that much after 7 p.m., why you should take a little bit more time than she does to respond to the message and why you uh, should react in the way that you do if she doesn't respond to your text, if she responds super slow, if she doesn't answer your questions, etc. So the general rules still apply, but try to understand the reasoning behind them instead of following them blindly. And if you have any other texting questions, then just make sure you are on our Day Game Church Telegram group chat, uh, which you can join by heading over to my website, strobert.blog. It is strobert.blog. Joining, joining the mailing list and, simply, and you will receive the invitation link in the welcome email. And as I said in the beginning of the podcast, I am soon going to Mexico for spring break. After that, I might stop in the USA and might have one uh, coaching spot there. And then I'm back to Europe and I will have one coaching spot in May in an amazing day game city in Europe. Something that I'm not going to name right now. If I, if I fill the coaching spot without naming the city publicly, then I'm going to kind of try to do it like that. If you are interested in any of those places, then click on the link in the description to read more about how coaching with me usually works. Fill the form at the bottom of the page. Make sure you mention whether you're interested in Mexico, USA, in your, or Europe, and I'll get back to you with all the details. The prices, the cities, the dates, etc. And then if everything sounds nice, we'll jump on a short WhatsApp call where you can ask any other questions about how coaching usually works to understand whether that's the best decision for you. And I will have a few questions to ask you because I need to understand who am I working with to figure out what's the best way I can help you. Well, guys, that's it for this time. Thank you for listening and see you in the next podcast episode. Ciao, guys.